There are specific distributions of matter that all students have to be familiar with when it comes to calculating rotational inertia. Rotational inertia for a distribution of matter involves setting up and evaluating the following integral. This expression here, where r is the magnitude of the moment arm which goes from the axis of rotation to the infinitesimal amount of mass dm within the object itself. So let's immediately take a look at the distributions of matter that we have to worry about, the first of which is the one-dimensional stick. There are actually two situations to look at for the one-dimensional stick. I'm going to use my dowel rod here to illustrate. We're going to first of all pass an axis through the center of mass of the stick, such that it rotates like so, and then secondly we'll have the axis pass through the end, such that it rotates like so. So which of these situations, like this or like this, do you suppose is going to have the bigger rotational inertia? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the problem itself, part A. Part A of the problem is a one-dimensional stick of mass m, length l, and linear density mu. So recall that linear density is mass over length. And then we pivot it about an axis that is passing through the center of mass. Set up and evaluate this integral. Okay, so here's then how we go about doing so. This is part A of this example involving the stick. With part B in a few minutes, we'll pass the axis through, the, through one end of the stick. But for now. Okay, so right here, for example, is a coordinate system, and then let's place the stick like this. So it says geometric center here passes through the center of the diagram, and then imagine it rotating around an axis like so. So right here is the axis of rotation passing through the center of mass. Okay, now this side of the stick we'll say is a position of negative L over 2. This side of the stick is position positive L over 2. And then here's how we begin to set up and evaluate this integral. We first of all take a look at an infinitesimally small amount of mass. So right here is a dm, and this mass has a length dx associated with it. Okay, and then we have the moment arm. The moment arm goes from the axis, in this case the center of mass, to this point right here where dm is located. The magnitude of this moment arm, r, we'll just refer to as x. So then here's how we begin to build and set up this integral. We basically need two things. We need the magnitude of the moment arm, which in this case is just going to be x, and then we need the infinitesimal amount of mass dm. But we need to write the mass in terms of something that can be integrated. This is where the density comes into play. So recall that density is mass over length. So that's infinitesimal amount of mass divided by infinitesimal amount of length cross multiply the length here to the other side to get the mass by itself. Okay, and now we just plug everything into the expression. So the rotational inertia I is going to be the integral of first of all r squared, which is x squared, and then times dm, which is as follows. And notice that the variable that we're integrating over is the position x. So then therefore we're going to be integrating from negative L over 2 to positive L over 2 like so. Okay, now the density is constant, the stick is uniform, so then therefore when you integrate x squared dx, the antiderivative is one-third x cubed. So then therefore, we get that i is equal to the density times one-third x cubed, and then we evaluate this between negative L over 2 and positive L over 2. So take the positive L over 2 and plug it in and cube it, and you get L cubed over 8. Like so. And then we'll subtract with the negative L over 2 plugged in and cubed, which is negative L cubed over 8, like so. So just be careful, of course, with your negative signs here as you set this up. Okay, now this is L cubed over 8 plus L cubed over 8. So then therefore this is equal to 2L cubed over 8, which is the same thing as L cubed over 4. So let's go ahead and start simplifying. So the rotational inertia is going to be the density over 3, and then multiplied here by L cubed over 4, like so. And now let's go ahead and get rid of the density mu by writing the density as total mass divided by total length. So density is total mass over total length. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So total mass over total length. And then you have 3 times 4, which is 1 12th and then times L cubed, and L cancels here and here, making this an L squared. So then ultimately we end up with the density as being 1 12th ML squared. 
you will very rapidly actually memorize this number for problems going forward, or this value rather for problems going forward, but you do have to know how to derive it. Okay, now once again, this is the rotational inertia. If you take the stick and then rotate it about an axis like so, passing through the center of mass. Now what we'll do is we'll pivot it like so about an axis that is passing through one end. And that's gonna be part B of this example. The only thing that will change, however, are the limits of integration from what I did earlier. So then here's how we set up part B. Okay, so let me do some racing. And then I'm gonna keep all of this here the same as what I had earlier in part A of the problem. But for now, part B of the problem, we're gonna position the stick like this. All right, so once again, right here is the axis, but now we're passing the axis through one end of the stick. So then therefore, we're gonna ultimately begin integrating from zero to L, imagine rotating like so. Okay, so once again, we take a look at a little dm here. It has a length dx associated with it. Our moment arm r goes like so, the magnitude of which is once again x. So as I said a few moments ago, the setup of the integral is exactly the same as I did earlier, but now in this case, we're integrating from zero to L. So go ahead and get the antiderivative, which is once again, one third x cubed. So mu over three x cubed. And then we evaluate this between zero and L, plug the L in and then plug the zero in and you ultimately begin to end up with this. Like so. At this point, however, once again, replace the density mu with the total mass over the total length. So then therefore, if you plug in m over l for the density, one of the l's cancels out, and you end up then with one-third ml squared. So notice that one-third ml squared is larger than one-twelfth ml squared. So then therefore, it's easier for me to rotate the stick like this than it is like this. I can actually feel this in my hands when I rotate the stick in these two manners. It's easier for me to do this than it is for me to do this. Once again, you need to know how to set up and evaluate this integral for these two stick examples. Okay, and then there are two more examples for us to look at. Let me move the file here on my screen. Okay, the next situation to examine is what is called the hoop. So imagine taking the one dimensional stick and you arrange it into a circle like so, and then what we'll do is we'll rotate it about an axis that is passing through the center of mass like this, perpendicular to the plane of the hoop, okay? All right, so the hoop here has a mass M and a radius R. It once again has a linear density mu. Find the rotational inertia where the axis of rotation passes through the center of mass perpendicular to the plane of the hoop. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. Okay, so right here, like so, is going to be my diagram. Let me position the hoop like this. Like so, or right here at the center is the center of mass, and then the axis is like this. It's perpendicular, so then therefore the hoop is rotating like so. It has mass M, radius capital R, and density mu. Okay, once again, we have to set up and evaluate this integral. The first thing that we do is we take a look right here at an infinitesimal amount of mass dm. It has an infinitesimal length associated with it, ds, which remember is the arc length of a circle. Okay, right here is the moment arm. The magnitude of the moment arm is equal to the radius of the hoop. It's just equal to capital R. So I'm gonna plug in capital R squared here in just a moment, but before we do, we need the mass dm. Once again, this is where the density comes into play. So density is mass over length. In this case, it's an arc length and then therefore the mass is equal to the density times the length. But remember that the arc length is found in terms of the angle in the following way. Recall the length element for polar coordinates. Let me revisit that briefly here. All right, so let me draw another diagram here on the lower board. Like this where right here is our little dm of length ds. Okay, the distance that it is away from the, from the origin, from the axis of rotation is capital R, and then right here is the infinitesimally small angle d theta. So recall that angle, oops, angle, excuse me, 
angle is equal to arc length over radius. So the arc length is equal to the radius times the angle. So once again, there's the length element in polar coordinates that we've seen before. Okay, so let's go ahead and replace on the upper board there, the ds with r d theta. Like so. And now let's go ahead and set up and evaluate our integral. All right, so let me do that down here. Okay, so the rotational inertia is going to be, first of all, little r squared, which is capital R squared, and then multiplied by dm, u r d theta, like so. And now what we're integrating over is the angle, and we're going all the way around the hoop. So then therefore, we integrate from 0 to 2 pump. This is an easy integral to perform because everything right here, of course, is a constant. So let's go ahead and pull the constants out like so. When I do, I end up with a mu r cubed, and then we'll integrate from 0 to 2 pi of d theta. When you perform this integration, you just end up with 2 pi. So mu times 2 pi times capital R cubed. And then the last step at this point is to replace the density once again with mass over length. In this case, however, the length of the hoop is its circumference. So density is mass over length. Let's go ahead and plug that into here, like so. And then, as you can see, a bunch of stuff cancels out here. First of all, the two pi's cancel out, like so, as does one of the r's here and here. And then ultimately, you just end up with this. You just end up with mr squared as the rotational inertia of the hoop when we rotate it like this. Okay, and then lastly, for the distributions of matter that you need to know how to set up and evaluate the integral for, this is one two-dimensional example, and this is the two-dimensional disk. So then therefore we have a two-dimensional arrangement of matter like so. We're going to ignore the thickness of the disk and then we're going to rotate it like this. Once again, about an axis that is passing through the center of mass of the disk perpendicular to the plane of the disk. So this is going to involve a two-dimensional integral. Okay, so I have this phrased as a problem. Let me go ahead and move it here onto my screen. All right, so this is a disk of mass M and radius capital R but it has an area density sigma. Recall that for a two-dimensional object, density is mass over area. Okay, once again, we have the same axis as the hoop that is passing through the center of mass of the disk perpendicular to the plane of the disk. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. I'm just gonna redraw the diagram here for purposes of clarity. Okay, so let's diagram it out like so. Okay, once again, right here is going to be the center of mass of the disk. Let's go ahead and draw the disk like this. And then the axis of rotation is like so, perpendicular to the plane of the disk. Once again, mass M, radius capital R, but now density sigma. Once again, that's mass over area. So we are, in fact, going to have a two-dimensional integral here in just a few moments. Okay, so now right here is going to be my little dm. This little dm is going to be the area element in polar coordinates in just a few minutes. But for now, right here is the moment arm, like so, and the magnitude of which we're just going to write as little r, because we are, in fact, going to have to integrate along the radial direction for this two-dimensional problem. So this right here is just going to be a little r. Okay, then we've got the mass dm. This is where density comes into play. So density is mass over area. So then therefore the mass is equal to the density times the area. And then this right here is the area element in polar coordinates. Hopefully you've committed to memory how you say very quickly the area element in polar coordinates. Do you remember? R d theta. So ultimately, if you recall, here's then how we describe that. Let's refresh your memories. Okay, so here's then how we describe the area element in polar coordinates again. This is a refresher for you. Okay, so right here we'll say, this pi wedge, if you will, this guy here is my dm. Okay, there's an arc length associated with a ds. Remember that because this and this are infinitesimally small, we think of it as the same. Okay, and then right here is the width, if you will, which is dr, like so. And then the distance that this infinitesimally small element is from the axis of rotation from the origin is little r on the diagram above. And then right here we subtend our angle d theta. 
Okay, so the area, dA, is length times width, like so. And just as it was before, the length right here, ds, is an arc length. Once again, d theta equals ds over r, so ds is equal to r d theta. So plug that into here, and then therefore the area element is, there it is, r d r d theta, which is very easy to remember, okay? Okay, so then therefore, go back up to the diagram above, and then begin to write dm as density times the area, so sigma times r d r d theta. Like so. so now I've got everything I need. Let's go ahead and set up our double integral. All right, so let's go ahead and erase all of this. Okay, so the rotational inertia I now is going to equal double integral. And then we first of all have little r squared then times dn. Like so. So yes, two integrals. Okay, the inner integral is in the radial direction from zero to capital R. The outer integral is in terms of the angle going all the way around the disk from zero to two pi, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and do the outer integral first, which is just zero to two pi d theta. Therefore, that's just equal to two pi. So, so take a look at that carefully. Notice that I pulled a couple of things out, and then I multiplied the little r's together like so. Okay, now let's go ahead and do this inner integral right here, where we're integrating along the radial direction. So the antiderivative of r cubed is one quarter r to the fourth. Like so, integrate from zero to capital R. So basically just plug in the capital R. So, and now let's go ahead and start to simplify. All right, so first of all, I can cancel on two here and here, like so. And then we've got the density sigma. So the density now we'll write as the total mass over the total area. The area of the disk is the area of a circle, pi r squared. So density equals mass over area, like so. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Let me clean this up here now as we finish. Okay, so the rotational inertia I here for the disk, we're going to first of all have a pi over 2, so let's take care of that, like so, and then times sigma, m over pi r squared, like so, and then times r to the fourth, like so. So the pi's cancel out here and here, and r squared cancels here and here, and then when you clean up what's left over, you do the math, you end up with one-half mr squared, like so. So that's the one two-dimensional example that you have to be familiar with. It's, however, the same calculation. Always take yourself through it by yourself, and then once you learn how to do it, you will never forget how to do it. So those are the distributions of matter that you have to be familiar with when ultimately setting up and evaluating the integral to find the rotational inertia.